Um, well, it puts some stress on us in terms of the employees um, because just because of the weight of the pandemic. And, and there's such a commitment uh, for folks to not lose sight of the importance of whom we serve, and that's why we're there. So it was, we had to do some kind of gathering around that in terms of kind of mental health and pe mind people take care of themselves. But essentially, our work is so important that we found ways to keep it going. Uh, and some of that was pivoting around how we deliver. And some of that was like having folks come in and offer up very unique ways of delivering. So I don't mean just going from in-person to virtual when you could, but maybe like different kind of uh, flexible scheduling, ways of, of uh, delivering things to folks um, that still allowed you to have a look at each other, but not be in each other's space in terms of social distancing. So in many ways, I think we were able to show our resiliency and strength um, and then come up with some innovative ways to do so. Um, so there have been challenges for program delivery and staff morale for sure. Um, meeting virtually has not been quite as effective as you know face-to-face -face interactions, especially when you're working with clients. Um, it's really difficult to maintain engagement. So uh, working around that has been tough, but I think our, you know, the staff have found ways around it and to still be able to deliver their programming. Um, and for the board, I mean, we haven't seen each other in two, you know, in person in two years. And so board meetings are not quite the same because they're such a technical kind of exercise. And so you don't get to interact with people in the same way that you normally would. Um, and also like other challenges, I think for staff have been trying to find work-life balance when you're working from home. That can also be a challenge, but overall, I think there's, you know, there's no replacement for in-person interactions, but certainly, you know, being able to do virtually, do things virtually um, in the absence of being able to do in-person has been good just to be able to still continue to, you know, deliver programs and continue the work that the YWCA does. Well, you know, it was really great that the fund allowed, the investment fund allowed us to be innovative um, and to go to what we saw our need was. So utilizing it uh, from the perspective of diversity, equity, uh, justice, you know, decolonization, like all of, all of the kind of components where they made sense. So we were able to um, enhance some of the, the things that were in operation, like having kind of uh, affinity focused groups um, within staffing um, and cross connecting with the board. So, you know, in terms of black, BIPOC, uh, overarching, trans, um, um, trans identified in terms of, of, of those kind of affinity groups supporting each other. And then also we could be more uh, intentional about the broad provision of professional development um, for folks in a variety of areas, including those that I mentioned. So it really, um, it really valued that as, you know, a member agency here, we can identify what our needs are um, and with support uh, from the national, we can, we can find uh, ways to deepen what we're doing already, as well as kind of create things in response to what we're learning. Well, so we're going to be, our member association applied for this funding to assist in our ED recruitment. So the YWCA St. John's has worked very hard to build strong relationships with the community, with governments, um, with uh, businesses, and with other organizations as well. So for us, a thoughtful approach to a hiring process is very important. Um, this will help us retain a recruitment firm. And I think finding a good fit for the YWCA St. John's um, to ensure that the work is continued to carry it out successfully is really important. Uh, overall, strong leadership is important and it will positively impact the larger movement, especially given how closely all of the member associations work together. Um, and it will help us be able to move forward in finalizing things like our strategic plan or sustainability plan and to be able to develop more policies. Um, so yeah, that's how uh, we'll be using such lessons. So, you know, when you're kind of not looking on the side or over your shoulder, like, where am I going to get the resources, the financial resources to do this? Or how am I going to spare, uh, 
free up some time from folks who are doing work with us or how am I going to find ways to support volunteers? So it addressed a lot of those pieces for us and what we were doing. And so really, you know, I don't want this word to be heard as kind of um, bigger than what it is, because I think it's a true word. And the word that I want us to, to be able to say out loud is that it helped to transform us, right? It gave us a space to be able to, to be able to look at things from a different lens, from a different perspective. And for people to know that that support was there, was ongoing. The other piece that it allowed us to do was kind of like in an incubator way, because it's, you know, we're looking at something, we're trying it out, um, but along with trying it out, we can talk about and maybe uh, insert the supports that we need to make something successful. We really can't put a price tag on the support from National for our staff. I know that working with um, collaboratively with National and having access to the resource has been absolutely invaluable. I think it's been like integral to building the organization to what it is now um, and being able to carry out programming because whether it's an HR issue navigate or navigating advocacy, there have been very tangible ways that National has been able to provide support. Um, now the other thing that National does, which I think our staff and our member association um, find very helpful is the way National works to connect um, member associations. Uh, the, in our case, it's literally been able to keep our organization going, like the support that we have received from other member associations. Um, and things like policy development, program development, fund development, those have all been done with the assistance of national and member associations. So, and again, those are like foundational to the member associations. So that kind of support cannot, it, it's quite invaluable. So it means so much to me personally, because I love to be in a place where people are doing things, like where there's action happening. So we we can come at it in multiple ways, but just to speak from two perspectives, we see there's a need, we get the lived experiences, voices in there talking to us, but that need us, and then we respond to it. The other is that we're continuing learning, like research, reading, talking to folks, and we can take up something that we hear that makes sense to be addressed, um, and we move that forward. So I, I just love it. It's it's a very uh, it's a very doing organization. I would describe it as a as a human rights movement, um, equality for women, girls, gender diverse people. It's a basic human right, and the folks that YWCA gives to raising those profiles and raising those people up, giving them that foot in the door, giving that push forward, focusing on communities that might otherwise be overlooked to really change structural inequalities is, is valuable. And it's, um, yeah, it's very important work.